evening everyone so happy to have you guys for our october monthly meeting webinar tonight this is bp Maria, that is broward palm beach miami dade real estate investors association your only local chapter here in south florida that is approved in compliance with the national ria national real estate investors association my name is alexa coo at bp Maria. we have an awesome monthly meeting for you guys so so excited we have slow flips to freedom with the one and only Scott Jelinek, owner of slowflips.com. You guys, he's going to have his time to shine, but I just have a couple announcements and to get us off on a really positive note here because I know it's Wednesday night, but we have we have some things we got to talk about tonight, um, especially Scott, as you guys are going to want to hear this. So go ahead and text the word membership to 954-800-6961. We're going to raffle out a one year BPM RIA membership to somebody in this webinar tonight. It's a $295 value. So go ahead and text that word to that number that you see on the screen. And I also pop those details in the chat for you guys too. So I'll announce the winner at the end. Hopefully I remember because you guys know it's, it's, it's late. So you guys, good luck. Go enter the raffle right now. Go to the chat. Details are in there. Looking forward to that, you guys. So many events. We have so many events. And would you look at that? They are all free. So no excuses. I want to see you guys showing up, showing out, getting locked in and, and learning with us. We have so many topics here that you should definitely be interested in. We have a rental management tasks automating webinar tomorrow. You guys, I know there are a lot of I know there's a lot of landlords in here, so go ahead and register for the webinar tomorrow if you want to see what's up with Turbo Tenant. Uh, free webinar from 11 to 12.30. We have an awesome webinar, AI, day-to-day -day business activities. You guys, it's like one of my favorite topics, so go get registered. We're going to talk Burr. We're going to talk um, creative financing in person at Nova Southeastern University campus. Go get locked in. Go RSVP. Go, go, go. Um, and you can find all these events on our website right now. You guys, sometimes we get lost in the sauce and it happens. So come join us. We're going to discuss how to track and optimize your KPIs. Really awesome topics. You guys, winter arc, stay locked in. Let's go. So, oh yeah, my bad, you guys. This is October 12th. Thank you so much, Donna. October 12th. Um, right in between these guys here. So that's a Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. My favorite way to keep up with events, super easy and convenient. Go ahead and text the word BPM, R-E-I-A, all one word, no spaces to our event line. If you would uh, like those text updates, super convenient. You'll get the registration link, everything straight to your phone, just like you did for tonight's monthly meeting. You got that text this morning telling you guys what you're going to learn with the registration link. So convenient. Love it. Go do it. It's in the chat. BPM, all one word, no spaces to our event line. Um, go to the chat. Go to the screen. Get it done. Super convenient. Love it. All right, you guys, boot camp. Our next two-day quick start is November 16th and 17th. You guys want to know what we're talking about. I highly recommend clicking the link in the chat so you can see the speakers on this training, what we're talking about. This training is led by Anish Dave. It's our in-house boot camp. We're going to discuss wholesaling, flipping, rehabbing, um, mostly just wholesaling and rehabbing, actually not flipping. So you guys might want to pay extra attention tonight. Uh, yeah. So, um, and then we have, um, a money back guarantee for you guys. So go ahead and lock in. That's going to be, um, November 16th and 17th. Go click the link in the chat member pricing and non-member pricing. So go, go, go members. As you know, you get all the goodies, you get the membership benefit package with national RIA, all those discounts to home Depot, Office Depot business, Rent Perfect, Avis Budget, Cama Plan, the list goes on. Go get your membership right now before our quarterly meeting next month. You guys, I want you guys to have a smooth, smooth um, experience at the networking event. So go get your memberships renewed now or get your membership now so that you have a super smooth time at the November meeting at Nova. You're not going to want to miss it. It's going to be awesome. Lots of vendors, lots of learning, really good time. Plus, you want to start getting those benefits 
um, Home Depot especially. Just go do it. You will not regret it. All right, mentoring coaching here at BPM Maria. Some of you may know that we offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. Some of you may not. Uh, for those that have no idea what I'm talking about, I invite you to go to our website to go book a discovery call where I can share the complete breakdown of everything that we include in the programs that we offer, pricing, everything you are, uh, you know, I want to get to know you, I want to talk with you guys, but most importantly, I know this is what you all want. You want to talk with a mentor directly, and I'll be more than happy to schedule that meeting for you guys. So I look forward to speaking with you guys. Link is in the chat. My email's in the chat. Go do your thing. And thank you guys for, oh, if you're interested in funding your education, go ahead and scan this QR code. All you need is a minimum 620 credit score, $35,000 verifiable income. It's a soft credit poll. And if you do it tonight, you'll get a response by tomorrow morning. Um, so go scan this QR code if you're interested in funding your education. Super easy. And thank you guys so, so much for giving me a couple minutes always to let you know what's going on here at BPM Ria. I always want to thank Thank National RIA for everything that they provide. Thank you to all of our corporate vendors, all of our members. Thank you guys so much. And all of you that made it out to this webinar tonight, I know that you guys are taking the time out of your night to be here and learn and ask your questions. So with that being said, we don't want to miss any of your questions. So go put your questions in the Q&A box that you see on your screen. There is a menu in Zoom. It says Q&A with a little question mark on there. Go ahead and put all your questions in there for Scott. Scott's going to be chatting with you guys throughout the night. He's going to be teaching you guys. So you want to engage with him, go ahead and you know, put some stuff in the chat. He's looking, you guys. So don't think he's not looking at, he's looking at the chat. So yeah, you guys, we are recording tonight's session. So we will have the recording available for you guys. Um, give us like 24 to 40 hours to get that posted for you all. And like I said, we are going to break for questions. So you guys have the ability to ask questions directly to Scott in that Q&A box. So without further ado, we are so excited and happy to have you back, Scott. You just were able to break down your strategy in a way that is easily digestible, which is refreshing. We were able to understand what you're doing, but we also are very curious in what's been going on since you were here last. We want to know, you know, what have you seen? What can we learn? We just, we want to know everything. We want to get in your brain tonight and just see how things are going with the slow flips because nobody's doing that, you know, kind of stuff besides you. Like you're the only one who's doing it like that. And that's why we want, we definitely wanted to have you back. We don't really have anyone that does um, what you do at all. So, you know, you know, it's funny, Alexa, is, is that a lot of people hate what we do. Right. And I, I get that a lot. Like when I go speak somewhere, I tell people right up front and I'm telling you guys as well. If you guys d have never heard slow flips before, some of you will hear it and absolutely hate it. And that's OK. I, I tell people that up front because most people are pitching something, you know, Lamborghinis and yachts and mansions and all this stuff. And I tell people right up front, I'm like, listen, if that's what you're looking for, this is not going to be for you who I resonate with is somebody who's looking just to be free. That's it. They're looking to make more money coming in a month than they have going out and they can wake up and do whatever they want. That doesn't mean they still can't get to the next level, but that is not the objective of what we're teaching, which is why some people hate it right off the bat. They're like, but when are my millions coming? I'm like, right now we're just trying to get you to 20, 30 grand a month. You worry about that later. And so it's, it's a different philosophy on what most people are doing. We really appreciate that so much, Scott. You have no idea. I get so many calls on a regular basis flipping. I want to flip. I wanted this. I wanted that. And I'm like, okay, like take a deep breath. Like <laughs> let's, let's break this down. Like let's take it step by step. Like, you know, we're not expert flippers here at BPM Rail. Like we do rehabs. We love wholesaling. So just thank you for taking this time because I know you don't have to um, and we really appreciate it. So um, you guys make sure you ask your questions tonight. Don't hold back. And yeah, Scott, let us, let us know, but I'll be here and just, you take the wheel. We're, uh, we're here to see what first, you're Before I even start, I'd like to ask a question for anyone who's listening is how many people have even heard of slow flips or know what it is that we've been discussing tonight? 
And, um, and I guess you can use the chat and either just put in a yes if you've heard of it before or a no if you haven't. And I'm just curious because that'll help gauge on, you know, I'm a fast talker anyway, but how fast I talk. I was told I only have an hour and 15 minutes and I got to get six hours worth of stuff done. So, um, so I'm going to, so we're, we're nose so far. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to take it slower in the beginning then where I explain exactly what it is. And then we will, uh, we'll go through it and get you guys there. So am I good to get started and share the screen now? Yes, please go share because yeah, these people are going to about to be mind blown. I'm excited for you guys. Uh, let me see if I can do this properly. Looks hey, good. all right. I am not a tech guy. If anyone has not been able to tell, I am not a tech guy. I do what I can, but I, I no means I'm a tech guy. All right, so I just want to get started first off with letting you guys know that why am I here? I am, I am on a mission to help as many people as possible set themselves free through real estate investing. And I try to clarify that set yourselves free thing is, that's what I was saying before about Lamborghinis and yachts and I, that is not what I'm about. What I strictly work on is helping people to set themselves free to get out of the race where you have to work all week to get enough money to make it to next week. And that's kind of my main focus on what I teach. Um, I've been doing this now, this model, I've been real estate investing since 1994, but this model I've been doing since 2011. And so, I'm sorry, this model since 2011, I personally have been investing 30 years now. So before I get into slow flips, I want to take a minute just to tell you guys a little bit about myself. And the reason I want to isn't so that you get to know me better, although that's awesome. I want to tell you a little bit about myself so that you understand why I think the way that I think now, because most people can't even grasp it. They're like, they want to argue, but, but, but you can make so much more if, and that's why I got to start you at the beginning so you can understand why it is that I think the way I think and what it is that I'm doing. So if you haven't been able to tell so far by my rate of speech or what little I have left of my accent, I'm originally from New York. I grew up on Long Island. I, uh, I dropped out of high school when I was in 11th grade. And I, you know, long story, I sold candy in school. And one day a teacher basically just told me when I was leaving, she says, why do you even come in? And I remember going home that night and thinking about it. I already had a job and I was like, why do I come in? And I never went back. And that was my last day of school. I joined the army when I was 17 years old. I was in for a short time. Then I got back. Um, this was during 1991, during the first Gulf War. Then I got back and I was back in Virginia. I'm back in New York. And then I moved to Virginia in 1992. And so 1992, I moved to Virginia. I rented a townhouse at the time. And at the time, my brother got this flyer on his door and sent it to me. And you guys can see it. The very bottom, and only I can't see your faces, so I can't tell how old everybody is, but only people that have a few years on them will remember this. But back back then, they had a thing, if you notice the bottom of the flyer, it says non-qualifying assumption. So they did away with these in 1987 for FHA and 1989 for VA. But what it meant was anybody can assume, non-qualifying, anybody can assume that mortgage. With, as long as you made a deal with the seller, the bank blessed it. It was just like we do a sub two now, only with the bank's blessing. And this is important for me to share this with you because you're going to understand why I sell the way I sell now, because this is how I started. So I bought this property with no intentions of real estate, but I bought it to move into, right? And I did. I moved into it. My payment was $675 a month. That's about what I was paying in rent. And I just figured better to own than to rent. Well, about two, three weeks after I moved into this property, another house on the block came up for sale, just a white sign, magic marker on it that said $2,000 down and takeover payments. Now, I didn't know anything about real estate. I didn't know anything about the values. I didn't know anything about anything. All I knew is I put 5,000 down and this one was 2,000 down and suddenly I felt like I got ripped off. I know that doesn't make sense, but I was a kid at the time and so it made sense to me. So my genius brain decided to buy this next house also. And that was my first time thinking about real estate. Every month, the tenant I put in there would pay me and I would pay the mortgage. Now, mind you, I was renting it for the same amount as my mortgage. It wasn't too bright. I didn't have a whole lot of long-term planning, but, but that's what first got me started thinking about real estate. And then I became obsessed. I became obsessed with non-qualifying assumptions, which again, don't exist anymore. They ended them in 1989, but they were good for the full 30 years after 1989, right? So 
you were able to take over the payments. So I became obsessed with back then, and you know, this shows my age, but we didn't have the internet. So every Saturday, the newspaper would come out in the real estate section, and I would just look for non-qualifying assumptions with the lowest down payments. And I bought as many as I could. So I got to 20 properties. I called it my McDonald's plan. And my McDonald's plan was simple. I never worked at McDonald's and it has nothing to do with McDonald's other than I used to always jokingly tell people, I'm going to buy a million dollars worth of these properties and then I can work at McDonald's if I want and I'll be a millionaire. I'm working at McDonald's for 30 years and I'll be a millionaire, right? It's a long-term plan. Just wait till they're paid off. And that was my plan and I was doing well. I got 20 properties, all Virginia Beach properties, and I was well on my way and I was doing well with it. But then in 2001, something happened that changed everything. So you may remember, I don't know how it was in your market, I think most of you guys are in Florida, but in Virginia anyway, 2001 was the first time we had any appreciation. Starting from when I started in 94, but I was buying them for the same prices that they paid all the way back to 87. And there was no appreciation until 2001. So in 2001, I started seeing housing prices that I was, I knew they were $65,000 townhomes, and now they were telling me 90,000 and 120,000. So that's when I realized, I said, I might not have to wait 30 years. I'm getting the value here, right? So that's when I started learning the business, learning. I started going to seminars. I started reading books. We didn't have YouTube then, you know, but I started learning as much as I can. And I did everything that you were taught to do, much like you guys are still taught to do. And I don't want to, I don't want to put it down because it does work for people. As a matter of fact, if you started in 2009 or later, it's been working flawlessly. Doesn't mean it'll work the next 10 years, but I started doing what everyone taught, which was refire everything, pull my money out and buy more properties. And I did. And so I took my 20 properties and I refired them, pulled out all the equity and bought more and got up to 84 properties. And I was crushing it. I'm a huge success right in the world's eyes. I was mowing lawns before I bought my first house. And now here I am. I got 84 properties. I'm bringing in all this money and everything's fantastic. Well, that was until 2007. And, and again, I can't see your faces and I can't see your ages. But in 2007, the world stopped. And everybody talks about it being 2008. And I always say I have my QuickBooks and I can assure you it was 2007. And overnight, I had 30, 40% of my my um, tenants stop paying, the values plummeted. And although if you Google the, how much the, the values went down, they'll, they love to tell you it went down 20% or 18%, all these make-believe numbers. But the reality is, and I know this as a fact, I still have some of these houses, houses that I sold for 199,000, I rebought the same house for 30,000 when they were bank owned. And I still own them to this day. And so the houses prices plummeted. Well, I had a lot of money at the, not a lot, but I had about a million dollars in cash at the time. And I was fighting the good fight. I, you know, I said, well, this can't last forever. It's got to come back. Tenants have got, you know, we got to turn over. The economy's got to get better. And so I paid, I was losing $25,000, $30,000 a month, keeping everything going. And then I ran out of money. And you can imagine what happened when I ran out of money, right? So I ended up foreclosure. That's what happened, right? So I ended up losing about 55 of those houses to foreclosure. And this is hard on anybody. Anybody who loses a house to foreclosure is obviously going to be hard, but it was especially hard on me because I'm driving around. I have these beautiful Escalades wrapped in stop foreclosure. We buy houses, stop foreclosure. And so that was a challenging time. And I didn't lose everything. I still had a few houses left. I lost all my money, but I still had some houses left. But then afterwards, as the market started to recover, which was late 2008, the market so much didn't recover, but the industry started coming back. Everybody, everybody disappeared for about a year, year and a half. Well, as the market started coming back, I started looking at who was crushing it and who was getting crushed, right? And what I noticed was the guys who were cash guys, which I was so against. I was a burr guy. I'm like, nope, refi, refi, refi. You're stupid if you pay stuff off. I, I believed in it wholeheartedly. The stupid guys, right? The lenders, the older guys who owned everything free and clear, they were crushing it because now they're buying up these houses for 30 grand that used to be 200 grand and they're killing it. They kept doing it and doing it and I'm watching, yet I, I don't have any money left. I have no credit left. I couldn't finance a pack of gum. And so I started trying to figure out a game plan as to what we can do moving forward. And that is kind of how the slow flip evolved, which I'm going to explain to you in just a minute what it is. So fast forward, I've been full-time investing, full-time. I've been doing this 30 years, but full-time, nothing but real estate for the last 22 years. 
I've closed over 800 deals. We're closing in on 900 right now. And that does not include my slow flips. I don't consider those deals because they're holds. So I've closed almost 900 that were wholesales. I used to rehab, I used to build, and then I primarily wholesaled for years, including right now, I still wholesale. And then I currently own 178 slow flips. And now these range anywhere in price all the way up to my highest priced one is 875,000, which is not our conventional model, which I'll get into in a minute. I average about 40 wholesale deals a year. I, um, I don't do any marketing anymore. I love wholesaling. You know, how do you not love wholesaling? You do a little work, you go on. I, do, I don't do virtual. I go on actual appointments. You get a contract, you sell a contract, you get 30 grand, 50 grand. So it's beautiful. How could you not love it? And then 12, I always say 12 is the number that I am most proud of um, beyond anything else. And 12 is the number of weeks that I spend traveling every year with my family. And I made a point when I revamped this business that I wanted to design what I wanted my life to look like and then build a business around the time that's left instead of what we always did and what everyone still does, which is you build a business and then you try and squeeze in a life to whatever time is left. And for those of you who, who have done that or are currently doing it, you know that there's typically nothing left. That's just the way it is. We work and we work and we work with the plan of, well, once I get to this level, then I can start doing something different. But the problem is if it's not planned and scheduled, it just doesn't happen. And so I literally, it's been years now. I've made this new plan in 2011 to revamp everything. And it is amazing how much different my life is. I mean, even it, just to look at my calendar, my calendar is filled with ball games and trips. And like today, this was on my calendar. This was the only thing on my calendar today that I'm doing this today at seven but I don't have a calendar like I used to have, which was appointments, 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 appointments. And then if I was lucky, I would get home and be able to do something else. And so I wanna start off with, normally when I, when I talk with people, we do a whole, um, a whole process on coming up with your number, but we don't have time for that today. So I just want you to think about it. And when I say, what is your number? I mean, what is your freedom number? What is the number that you would need to be free? And just, you can come up with in your head. Now, again, when I normally do the exercise, we literally come up with everything, your car, your house, your vacations, we, we itemize everything. And then we put a dollar amount next to it. And then we come up with what is that number that you would need to be free, that you didn't have to work anymore. You didn't have to flip houses, not to say you shouldn't flip. If you love it, do it. You don't have to do anything though. So you need to know what that number is because that's when you can progress to the next level, but you've got to get to that number first. I'm going to tell you an interesting thing, and I'm trying to be vigilant of time because I can normally go for three, four hours, and I'm going to try and be done in an hour and a half. But something that's really crazy is when I do this exercise with people, most people in their head think, I need 50 grand a month, 80 grand a month. And over years, and I've been doing this training since 2005, 2005 it's been. So it's been a while now. And on average, the average number that people need to be free which is a lot lower than you think, is $10,000 a month. And the reason it's so low is because, again, this is predicated on that you have no debt. So your car is paid off, your house is paid off. You're literally, your bills are, you're going out to eat, you're paying your insurance and utilities and vacations. And on average, most people will come up with a number around $10,000 a month. Every now and then I have somebody in the room who will say, you know, I'll go through and get everybody's numbers. Every now and then somebody will say, oh, my number is 80 grand. And I, and I love when they do it because then I'll say, okay, break it down for me. What are you spending that 80 grand on? And they'll get to, well, my house will cost this, my car. And then, and then they'll get to maybe 15 grand worth of spending. And then the rest is so I can invest. I said, no, that's not a freedom number. The freedom number is just so you don't have to do anything. It doesn't mean you stop there. The, the excess, yes, so you want to reinvest and reinvest. That's all great. But that is not the number to freedom. And that's why I want you to just play it in your head real quick. Just come up with. Let's suppose you're not free and clear right now. You still have a mortgage on your house and it might be five grand a month and you still have a car payment that could be a thousand a month and you got credit card bills and you have utilities and, and your, your vacation or whatever it may be and plan it out. It might be 15 grand a, a month that you need that if you had 15 grand a month, you didn't have to work anymore. Doesn't mean you stop, but you don't have to. And so I want you to just have that number in your head because the reason I like to start off with coming up with that number is because we can definitively come up with a plan to get you there and 90% of the time, we can get somebody there in five to seven years. 
And I know people that teach all these get rich quick stuff. They're like five to seven years. I want to do this next month. Well, that's true. That's that sells. People love to go to that, that pitch. But the reality is five to seven years is real and you can really do it in five to seven years. And that's why we call it the slow flip. It does take a little bit of time. I can't tell you the amount of times somebody has told me they do not want to do this because they need to make money right now. And they're like, no, this is going to take too long. I don't want to wait five years. I need to make money right now. And then five, six, seven years later, they are still just trying to make money right now when they finally come back and be like, I wish I started. I wish I started when we first met. And at least you start now. All right. So enough of that. I want to tell you about the great rental myth. Um, how many people in the room have rentals? If you can just type in a yes, if you have rentals, so at least I can get a feel for, uh, for what you guys have going on. I'm trying to look at the chat. If you can just type in yes, if you have any rentals, maybe nobody has rentals because I'm not seeing any come up. But um, there is a great rental myth and there's two sides to it. And so I want to quickly go over both sides of the great rental myth to you. And that is... Two, two sides. So first I'm going to go over the part of leverage versus free and clear. Leverage is extremely sexy. Everybody loves it. No, you use the bank's money. You get to deduct this and you get to make profit on their money and, and you get your money back. And all of that sounds beautiful. And it is if everything works out perfect. What they don't tell you, the way the story goes is if you have $100,000, you can buy one house. And I'm using 100 because it's easy math. You can buy one house for $100,000 or you can buy 10 houses with $10,000 down each, right? This is what everyone teaches. And then they say, well, if they go up 10% in value, the one you paid cash for, you only made $10,000 in profit, right? That was 100, now it's 110. But the leverage one that you put 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 on, now that's 100% return because now they all went up $10,000 each. So now you have 10 houses that went up $10,000 each. And that all sounds great. And everybody's like, oh yeah, that's a great plan. I love it. What they never discuss is if the market went down 10%. And if the market went down 10% with the cash model, now you have a house that you paid 100 for that you owe 90 on, right? You lost $10,000. And with the leverage model, you lost 10,000 on each of them. You lost 100% of your money. Not the end of the world, providing they're rented and they're cash flowing, you don't have to sell. So it's not that big of a deal, right? However, what if it went down 30% or 40%? And mind you, it's been great since 09. So people, if you're new in the business, you might be thinking, well, that doesn't happen. That can't happen. Let me tell you, it can and it does. It hasn't happened in a while. Um, but if it was to go down, say, 30%, well, now you owe $90,000 on 10 houses that are only worth 70. Not only that, again, not a big deal, providing your cash flowing and the tenant stayed and paid. But if they don't, now you're paying out of pocket to save houses that are upside down. And that is part of the myth. The, the part of the myth that spread constantly, and I watch it in other people's events and seminars and books, and they always say rents don't come down. And I'm like, where have you been? Yes, rents do come down. Rents can come down. They do. They haven't in years, but absolutely, it's all supply and demand. They can absolutely come down. And then the second thing is the pricing. They're like, oh, no, the prices will come down. I said, yeah, they came back. I mean, we're ex we've exceeded our, our 08 you know, highs. I mean, our 06 highs. We've exceeded them by far, but it took, I'll tell you, my personal house, not the one I live in now, my personal house that I lived in, I bought in 06. I sold it in 2020 for almost the exact same price because I, I bought it at the peak and it was 2020. I sold it. It was almost the, I, I bought it for 580. I sold it for 600. So it was almost the exact same price that many years later, 14 years later. So these things happen. The second side of the great rental myth is repairs. So a lot of what's taught is to try and have a $300 spread. And they're like, oh, after you factor out repairs, factor maintenance, factor management, factor all this, try and have a $300 profit spread. And all of that's great. But what people don't factor in is repairs will end up being approximately $300 per month. And people love to argue with me on this because they're like, no, I have my house two years and I haven't done any repairs or I only fixed $200 worth of stuff. And they're like, no, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong until... They go through their QuickBooks over years, if they have QuickBooks, and if they've had the, ten, the prop, properties for years, they'll call or text back and they'll be like, man, I just did it for the last 10 years and you were right. Where I come in to be right, and it's not me being right, it's just the real numbers, is over time, there's cost. There, there, there's replacing car, the stuff that wouldn't be a, a maintenance issue. 
there's replacing carpet. Every now and then there's going to be an air conditioner has to be replaced. Every now and then there's going to be a tenant turn. That's everything, paint, carpet, appliances, everything. So you may go five years with no repairs, and then you're going to have a big one that's going to be $9,000 to get a rent ready again. And what ends up happening, more often than not, is all that cash flow. People are like, well, it's $300 a month, and you got 10 properties, so you're at $3,000 a month positive. I talk to people all the time. They have 10, 20, 30 properties, and they aren't making anything. It was all predicated on a myth. That's why I call it the great rental myth, that that cash flow would be there every month. And it's not, especially when you get in bulk. Now you have a certain amount of vacancy, generally the accepted rates, 5% vacancy rate. So you have those vacants that also have a mortgage due on them now that have to be paid and they come out of the cash flow from the others. So enough about that. I just wanted to talk to you about myself, why I got my head the way it is and what I consider to be the great rental myth. And now I'm going to talk to you about slow flips. Do you guys know who he is? I use Mr. Burns often as an example this is Mr. Burns from The Simpsons. And the reason I use him is I try to put a vision in your head of why, ah, you, Deborah, you know Monty's first name. I like it. Um, so, uh, so I try and use Mr. Burns to put a vision in your head of what I consider to be the great rental myth. I consider the, the whole debt model to be a myth. I feel like it was started by the banks to get everybody buying rentals on loans so that you can keep sending the money up. So I have this vision in my head where I picture Mr. Burns, as you're looking at right here, sitting at the top, go to any city in the country and the tall buildings are gonna have a bank name on the side of it. And I picture Mr. Burns sitting here like this, waiting on you to send him his money. And that's the typical plan. The tenants don't pay, guess what? Mr. Burns still wants his money. The, uh, the air conditioner got stolen, I don't care. Mr. Burns wants his money. House is vacant for three months and you can't fill it. Mr. Burns wants his money. So in essence, you basically just have a job working for Mr. Burns. And that's why I always say, I say that I think the seminars originally were started by the banks to convince people to get a bunch of 30 year mortgages and just you do all the work and then send us the money, which is what conventional landlording is. They do all the work and then you send the money up to Mr. Burns. Well, with the slow flip model, we've kind of twisted it to become Mr. Burns. And so that is what I want to share with you now on exactly how these slow flips work. So what is a slow flip? I'm going to go with it to real simple for you. A, a slow flip is the process of flipping a property as slowly as possible for the fastest path to wealth. And I always have to stop when I say that to let you know it is not the fastest path to a check. The fastest path to a check, in my opinion, would be wholesaling. I love wholesaling. You go out, you do a deal, you get a check, and that is your fastest path to a check. But slow flipping would be your fastest path to wealth. And what I consider wealth, everybody has their own definition. What I consider wealth is having more money coming in passively than it costs you to live, right? And that's why we come up with your freedom number, your fastest path to wealth. So I'm going to go over my model. But before I do, I want to let you know that you may think, because of your market or where you are, you're going to, first thing you're going to think is, That'll never work. We don't have those numbers. This is crazy. I'm going to show you that it is real. It's not crazy. And it does work. I have, I have a group, mind you, I have a group that I, I work with at weekly and they probably buy between 30 and 40 every single week. It's out there right now today, not in 2005, right now today, it is out there. The numbers are doable. Everything about it works. So we buy them. I lost a slide there. Okay. So we buy them um, as is, we sell them as is. We sell them on long-term owner financing or what we call our kind financing program. The formula that we use is I buy them, and this is where I was telling you to sit down for the numbers. I try and keep acquisition costs at $30,000 or less. Now I know if you guys are all in South Florida, you can't buy a parking space out there for 30,000, right? I'm from Long Island. You can't buy anything for 30,000. You can't, that, it doesn't exist. I'm in Virginia now, and for years, we were able to buy them here, but our prices went through the roof here, and we can't buy them here. So we buy in other markets. We do everything completely remote now. Like we don't see, we have people we go to send pictures and video, but we don't ever go to see the house. We have a team that fills the houses. We never actually physically have to touch the house. We try and operate like a bank. So let me explain to you how we do it. We keep our acquisition costs at or below $30,000. We use private money lenders, no banks, private money lenders who fund the entire 30,000 at 12%. So we pay 12% interest 
Even when rates were 2%, we were paying 12. Right now, we're still paying 12. And I'll explain to you why in a minute. Um, but we do it on a fully amortized five-year mortgage. And this is the part that trips people up because I'm like, well, I hate debt. Everybody's like, yeah, but now you're getting in debt. Yeah, so you have to get in debt unless you're going to try doing Dave Ramsey's way where you can save up in advance to buy a house. You're going to end up dying with two houses. You can do that. But yes, we agree you have to get into debt. I just don't agree with it being long term. It has to be short term, pay it off as quick as possible. Donna, no, it is not interest only. It is fully amortized. And I'm going to explain to you how the payments break down in just a second. So there it is. Next slide. <laughs> so on a $30,000 loan at 12% interest, your payment comes out to $667.33. That is fully amortized, meaning there is no 61st payment. So you're paying $667.33 every month for five years, and then it is paid off. And we pay taxes and insurance. So on average on the sell, on the sell side, it's exactly the opposite. We sell them on average for 69 to 99,000. Now those numbers have gone up a little recently where we're getting 129, 139, but I wanna keep the numbers what they always were so that it's something that will work at any given time in the market. We sell for an average of 69 to $99,000. We typically get 3,000 to $5,000 down. That's a down payment, right? They're giving us as their down payment. And the average monthly payment is 875 a month. So 875 a month, you may be thinking, well, 875, I'm 667 plus taxes and insurance because we work it all into the payment. I'm not making any money. And you're right. You don't make any money. We make our money starting. I mean, sometimes there's a spread, 50, $75, but we make our money starting the 61st month. That's where the money's made. And then it's all ours. And we keep, you know, we keep that for the next, we sell it on a 30 year mortgage, mind you. So that's what I was saying. So we sell it on 875 a month, but on a 30 year mortgage. We sell it the way that everybody's accustomed to buying, the way you guys are probably accustomed to buying. When you go to buy a house right now, or you go to get a mortgage on your rental, everybody does a 30 year mortgage. So our buyers are no different. We sell to them on a 30 year mortgage, but we're buying it on a five year mortgage. So the, the term I always like to tell people, I say we buy it like a car and we sell it like a house. And this started during the, during the, um, bust or the recovery of the bust when I was the best deals I've ever seen in my life were out there and I had no money left and I had no credit. So I knew I needed private money, but I didn't want to get back in the debt game. So I was trying to calculate what is the most I can pay and be done as quick as possible. And so that's where we came up with 30,000, even though sometimes we'll do in my market here, we can even do 50,000. The payment comes out to $1,112.22. It's still five years. Um, so it still works because on those houses, we get 1175, 1275. So it still works. But I always try and keep the base numbers because they work all across the country when we do these numbers. So we get paid for 30 years. So I want you to sit and think for a second. $875 on a 30 year mortgage. You guys know how much you get paid back on that little twenty, thirty thousand dollars house? That little thirty thousand dollars house over the full time you get paid back comes out to three hundred and fifteen thousand dollars on that little crappy house that everybody said you were a fool for buying. Oh, I can't believe you're going to buy. You should buy nice class A rentals, right? All that stuff. Nobody makes any money with them, but they like to own them and say they own them. These are the houses that nobody wants. And yet we crush it. Like when I say we crush it, my group is amazing me every single week with the amount they're doing and the, and the deals that they're doing. It is absolutely amazing. When you think about one little house turns into that kind of money over time, it's all about the financing. So for those of you who have never seen an amortization schedule, I want to just give you a quick peek at it. So an amortization schedule is kind of, I always say evil genius. And it's amazing to me, if you guys have a mortgage on your house now, you know, you send in $3,000. I'm going to make up a number. I don't know how much your mortgage is. You send in $3,000 and then next month you get a statement and your balance went down $212. And you're like, but I sent in 3,000. Well, that's an amortization schedule. So I cannot stand an amortization schedule when I'm on the paying side, but I love it when I'm on the collecting side, right? And so this is just a quick peek at it. When they make their $875 payment to you, $32 of it the first month is principal. The rest of it is all interest. Now go 120, so that's 10 years later. 10 years later, they've been paying 875 a month for 10 years and their payoff you can see is still 
81769 So you paid 30000 for it. You didn't actually pay anything because your private lender funded it. You didn't make money for the first five years. They've been paying eight seventy five dollars a month now for 10 years, and they still owe $81,000. You owe nothing. You're free and clear. You've been getting cash, pure cash flow for five years, and they still owe $81,000. Now, let me tell you something I don't know is in a slide. I don't ever call, I don't make a balloon. I don't give them an option. They actually are the legitimate contract owner of the property. I never make them pay me off. I never make them refi. I try wholeheartedly, and I teach my people this as well, that we want them to succeed. That is what makes this work, is we have a string of people who are homeowners because of us. We want them to succeed. And I tell you that because I know a lot of people who teach similar models to what we do. And I've sat through their course or class or read their books and I hate it because I read it and it's legal, mind you, but I read it almost like a scam. I'm like, I'm like, well, they're giving them two years. I said, they, they don't have good enough credit to buy today. They're not going to have good enough credit in two years or whatever it may be. And so I, we set it up from the beginning that they have the full term. I tell people, as long as you make your payment, you're never going to see me again. That's it. Make your payment. Then you never get an increase. You're never going to see me again. On average, our profit comes out to $500 a month. And I know that sounds like a tiny number. People are like, oh, I'm not doing this for 500 a month. That's after everything. Now, really, it's a lot more, but I'd use 500 because it makes for easy math, right? And, um, and so why is it important to know the number 500? It's because what we were talking about before. If you have your number and you know what your number was, and let's say your number was $20,000 a month, we'll set you free, right? If you feel $20,000 and I don't have to get up, I don't have to work, I don't have to do anything, you still can. You know, I'm, I'm 51. I feel like I'm, I still got another good 30 years of work in me. I'm, I'm young, you know, so I still plan on doing it, but I don't have to at all. Out of my 178 properties, I already have 126, I think, are paid off. So I don't have to do anything. But what's the alternative? You're going to, you know, I see people retire. They sit home and die, right? And we're not going to do that either. So so it, your number is just your freedom. It doesn't mean you actually are done or stop or anything like that. But you take whatever your number was and divide it by 500. And that's the number of slow flips you need to get to freedom. And that's why I tell you I can get you there in five to seven years. So let's assume that model where you needed $20,000 to be free. That means you just need 40. 40. You need 40 slow flips. And this is not setting the world on fire. This is 40 slow flips. And the reason I say five to seven years, even though it's five, is because I'm giving you time to buy them, right? You're not going to have them all month number one. If, if you had them all month one, you can say, okay, you'll be free in five years. But usually I say five to seven years because it's going to take you some time to get them. And then the five years is really from the last one where that one's going to be paid off. So this is a different strategy and a different thought process because it's not predicated on Lamborghinis and yachts. It's simply to get you free. But what I love about it is it could make anybody free. Like anybody can be free. If you do the work and you come up with the number of what you need, and then you actually go out and buy them, the hardest part is private money. And we'll talk about that in a minute. You can be completely free in five to seven years, which means no more. I have to go to work. No more. I have to flip houses and you can still flip if you love it. But if you don't love it, you don't got to do it no more. And it changes everything when your focus is freedom and not focused on how much can I make? There's a challenge most people have in our industry, in industry being real estate investing, right? One of the big challenges we have is people gauge your success with a, a number that I hate. They usually, when you'll meet new people, it probably happens at your local RIAs or wherever you go. You shake hands, you meet somebody, and they want to ask you, how many deals did you do last year? And I hate that because I'm like, man, that has nothing to do with how much money you made. And people are like, oh, I did 100, I did 20, I did 50. And I'm like, but did you make, well, I didn't make any money, but next year, and I'm like, so what does it matter how many deals you did? I'd rather do less deals and make more money, right? And that's kind of the way I feel about slow flips. We make a small amount with them, but it's all ours. It's freedom, it's all ours. So a couple of things I wanna go over with you on how we automate this to the best of our ability, because I don't work a whole lot. I have 178 right now. And I did, I mean, obviously yesterday was the first of the month, so I did have to do some stuff yesterday. But barring that, I don't really do much of anything for the rest of the month until, you know, the first of the month comes again to get everything set for the month. Um, we use a software called My Deal Factory. It's mydealfactory.com. You don't need it if you're starting. It's something you would need as you progress. It just automates everything. It automates the management. It automates the late notices. It automates everything. Um, but 
not something that's necessary for somebody who's starting out. And then I have a showing system that I love and I started it local, but it works now across the country. And again, before I tell you my showing system, I want to let you know in advance that some of you will hate this. And as soon as I say it, you're going to be thinking, you can't do that. And I'm like, well, we do. And it's been great. And not to say we will never have a problem, but we haven't had one yet. I understand a problem could happen tomorrow, but as of now, we've had none. So we close on a new property. doesn't matter if it's in St. Louis. We buy a lot out in St. Louis. We buy a lot in Illinois, Indiana. But let's say it's in St. Louis. The first thing we do is we send somebody out there to put a lockbox on it. We always have a boots on the ground in every market to do pictures, video, put a lockbox, do signs. We put a lockbox on the house. We run ads. We do it through signs. We do it through Facebook Marketplace. We're going to talk about it in a minute. Whenever someone calls, we will not have a conversation with them unless they've already driven by the house. And for those of you who are already in this business, you understand that most people will waste your time and they want to go out and waste your time. And then when they get there, they don't even like the neighborhood. There's no way they want to live there, right? Well, I don't want to have my time wasted. So I say, no, 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 you need to drive by it before I'll even speak with you. I always tell them, I say, drive by it. You feel free to walk around, look in the windows, and then let me know if that looks like the house for you. Then we can talk, right? I tell them to give me a call. They always say, well, when's a good time I can see it? I say, give me a call an hour in advance, and then I can come. I'm available anytime. But if I'm not available, I have a neighbor with the key who can open up the door for you. So anytime you want to see it's fine, just give me a call an hour in advance. I'm not really going to see it. I just told you it's in St. Louis or Indiana. I'm here in Virginia. But I don't tell them that. I don't want anyone to know in advance that I'm sending them on their own. When they call, I tell them the same thing. I say, okay, no problem. I should be able to make it there in an hour. Um, if I'm not there when you get there, give me a call when you arrive. And I, I let them call in advance so that I know to watch my phone, right? Because I don't want anyone to show up and then me waste their time. So I let them call in advance so that I'm, I'm not wasting their time as well and I'm watching my phone. Then when they arrive, this is the kicker here. When they arrive, I tell them the neighbor just stepped out and I'm not able to make it. The neighbor just stepped out. But since you're already there, I'm going to go ahead and give you the lockbox code and let you let yourself in. And then I walk them through it. I say, put the lockbox to 2008, 2008. There's a little black tab to the right. Push it down. The front of the box will fall forward. Take the keys out, open the door, put the keys back in the box, close it up, spin the dial. Take as long as you'd like walking around the house. And when you leave, give me a call and then we can discuss it. I have been doing this since that. My code is 2008 legitimately. And I have been using that same code since 2008. And I have had zero issues. When I tell people this, they're always like, oh, no, they're going to steal your stove. They're going to break. They can do all of that, but I have not had one problem yet. It doesn't mean it won't happen tomorrow, but I will tell you that should it happen tomorrow, I don't care because I have saved thousands and thousands of hours of my time by letting people self-show. So that's the way we do it all the way across the country. We do it wherever, the same exact situation. Now, the next question, and this is a big one. What about the condition? When you're buying houses for $30,000, although I got to tell you two of them today that I had my, my um, group on earlier today, two of them today, I was shocked with the condition. One of them was in St. Louis and one of them was in Alabama and they both were about 25,000. And I scrolled through the pictures and I'm like, oh my God, how could this house be $25,000? But let's assume you're on average, the condition is not going to be great, right? Our rule, what we teach is what we call somewhat livable. And what I mean by that is it's not going to be pristine, although these two were today, but that's not the norm. They typically are going to need some work. They might just be clean out. Sometimes it's just filled with garbage or furniture or whatever. Sometimes it's overgrown. Sometimes it's missing a toilet, right? But, but I don't want a house that studs. I don't want something that's gutted. I want something that somebody moved out of and it can be moved back into. I want what we call somewhat livable. We don't sell all to homeowners. I sell to a lot of Section 8 landlords but I also need to keep the cost down on how much it's gonna cost them to make it section eightable. So I want it to be somewhat livable. So my answer always, when someone asks me, when they go in and they, they self-showed and then they call me when they're leaving and they ask about the condition and they say, well, I just wanted to check all the garbage throughout the whole house, what's gonna happen with that? Or um, the grass is all way overgrown and the shrubs are over the roof, You know, are you guys gonna take care of that? Or whatever they may say about the condition, right? My answer is always the same, and that is you're lucky. And what I mean by that and the way I explain it is they'll say, oh, are you going to cut the shrubs down? I can't even look out the windows. 
And I would say, no, and you're lucky we didn't do it yet because our guy's probably going to charge three, four thousand dollars, which means we're going to have to raise the down payment. But I'm sure you can get it done for much less than that. And that's the way I word it every time. Are you going to clean up the trash in there? I say, no, and you're lucky we didn't do it yet because right now the down payment's only three thousand dollars. The guy who was going to do it's going to charge us another three thousand. So your down payment would have been six thousand. But I'm sure you can get it done for much less than that. And they backpedal immediately and start saying, no, 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 my sons will take care of that. My husband has a landscape company. He'll take care of it. I have a friend who can do this. And immediately they backpedal. No, 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 they don't want anything. Because I say I can do anything, but you're paying for it. So, so your lucky is always the answer. And I sell them in all kinds of condition. This is legitimate. This is a house I had that um, they were running some kind of newspaper scam. My first buyer was running some kind of scam. I don't know what exactly he was doing, but apparently he was getting the newspapers, I guess getting paid to deliver them, but wasn't delivering them. Every room in the house was filled up like that. It was insane. This particular one, I'll tell you a funny story. So when, when I went to this one, I actually was like, oh, I'm going to have to do something because normally I do nothing, right? And I was like, well, I'm going to have to do something. This is like thousands of pounds of newspaper. And, um, but while I was there, I figured, you know what, I'm just going to stick my for sale sign out anyway. And, um, see what happens. And I had two people fighting over it. One of them crying because we do things on a first come first serve basis, which I'll talk about in a minute. One of them crying that she didn't get it in this condition. And I mean, it's amazing to me because we think as conventional landlords, as flippers, as um, section eight landlords, we have a certain mindset in our head that we look at something like that and we're like, well, it's going to cost 30 grand to get a rent ready. And I'm like, no, I paid $16,000 for this house. And this house, actually, I bought in 2011. I'm collecting 11.75 a month. I'm probably on my third buyer in it now. It's in pristine condition. I collect 11.75 a month since 2011. Well, it started at 8.75, but when it turned, the price went up. Since 2011, I've been getting paid on it, and it was in this condition. I didn't fix it. I didn't renovate. It's all renovated now, but I'm not the one who did it. So we do them in whatever condition they're in. That's the condition that we sell them in. This one I'm going to show you now. This is a video, and I'm not sure if the sound's going to come through, but I want to explain to you what it is first. I have three videos I'm going to show you. I might cut them off because I don't want to keep you too long. But this one was the worst one. People always ask worst case scenarios. So this particular one was I bought a package of 24 houses, and I, you know, I can admit I didn't do the best due diligence. I knew the guy who was selling them to me. I knew the neighborhoods. I drove by a bunch of them, but I didn't go in all of them. And I was getting a steal on them. I got them for $21,000 each. And so I, and to this day, it's still the best deal I've ever done. It, those houses are worth like 250,000 each now. Anyway, this one, I, I didn't go in. I'm in the Bahamas. I'm, I go to the Bahamas a lot. I love it there. I own a house now in the Bahamas. And my guy who was doing pictures and video calls me and he says, did you know this house had a fire? And I'm like, no. And he's like, yeah, it's all boarded up. It's burned out inside. And I'm like, so tell me there was a fire. Clearly the guy knew the guy who sold it to me and he never mentioned a word of it. So at first I was mad. And then I figured, you know what, I can donate it to a church if I want to. And I still got a great deal. That brings my price to 22,000 each, right? It's no big deal. But while my guy was there, he still did his video, his pictures, and he still put out a sign as we always do. And sure enough, a contractor ended up buying it. See, again, as landlords, we always think that we got a mom and dad and two kids are moving into our house. As a slow flipper, a lot of our buyers are contractors. They're contractors or rehabbers or Section 8 landlords. They're not the family. They're people in business. So anyway, so I sold this one cheaper than we normally do. Normally, I sell it at 89000 This one I sold at fifty nine. And ironically, this was one of the first ones out of that package that paid me off. But I want to show you the, um, the condition of it so you can get an idea of a... Uh, looks like it's not... Video is not moving, is it? Ooh, I think you might have to like stop share and reshare. And then there's a button that you have to click on the right side that says share sound. Oh man. Or if you go over, if you press the share button, you should see the share sound button. I think it should work. New share. Oh, okay. I see. Multiple advanced sharing button. Advanced sharing op options, maybe? Yeah, both of those, those two buttons on the those two clicks, share sound and something else. Hmm. Or you have to stop share and reshare. One of those. Well, uh, the sound doesn't much matter as long as the video is moving. Is the video moving? Yeah, yeah, the video is moving. You can just walk us through it. <laughs> yeah, 
as long as the video is moving. Anyway, the big part I wanted to show you is that this house is deplorable. It's burned out. And my guy is going through it. And if you can hear him, you'd be laughing. He's like, it's not that bad. And I'm like, it's not that bad. It's horrible. It's literally a complete burned out house. And he's showing them this is the kitchen, this is the bedrooms. And I'm like, oh my God, you're showing them this house as if it's a real house. It's burned out. And sure enough, a contractor bought it. And out of that 24, this was the first one that I actually got paid off because he renovated it and put it on the market and sold it. And when they sell, we get a windfall. Typically, it's a bigger windfall than that. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to play this thing, no reason. Typically, a bigger windfall than that. I have one closing at the end of this month that I just found out today, actually, because the agent called me to say, I see they have a contract with you. We don't know how this works. And I sold it to them. I bought it sub two. And I, I only owe like 55 on it. I sold it to them for 149 and they're selling it at 229 So they fixed it up and they put it on the market and they're selling it. So everybody wins. They're, you know, they have renovation costs, but they're still going to walk away with probably 20 grand. They didn't have to come up with a mortgage. They didn't have to come up with hard money. I didn't do anything. I just sold it and I collect a payment every month. And then at the end of this month, we get a windfall on it. So this one is going to be what's more of a typical slow flip. This is... Um, this one is in Newport News, Virginia. You're able to see that, right? So yes. I'm go this house I paid $20,000 for. And this is what a typical slow flip looks like. And that's why I wanted to show you the real bad one first and let you know what our average houses look like. And people that are in higher dollar markets don't even believe stuff like this exists. And I didn't buy it from any special source. I got this from a... Um, a local RIA um, group email that goes out that the guy was trying to sell it and it was being passed around until I finally called him. So I'm going to just let you see the condition of this house. And the reason I want you to see the condition is because this one, I have the rare occasion of, I sent my guy to pick up the lockbox a couple weeks later. And when he picked it up, the guy was there working on it. And so he asked him, would you mind if he did a video of what it looks like now? And so we're actually going to get to see the after only when you see the after you need to remember I didn't do any of that work. I didn't spend a dollar. I spent $20,000. So I want to tell you some numbers that I'm about to share in the video, but you won't be able to hear it anyway. So you take a note of what the kitchen looks like, take note of everything, and then I'm just going to pause it and see the numbers. Hey, everybody. Hi, I'm Scott. Tell me So I purchased this property for $20,000 but I borrowed $30,000, which is what we always borrow, right? 30,000 because it makes it into a system. When we raise private money, we always wanna have a system, right? So I borrowed $30,000 at closing when I bought it. Not only did I have no money into it, but I walked away with a check for about $8,000. And that was, I know you'd think it should be 10, but I had closing costs involved, right? So there was about $8,000 of profit the day I bought it. Then it took me about three days to fill the property. And I got another $3,000 down from a down payment from my buyer and then eight seventy five dollars a month. So from day one, I got that $8,000 and then another $3,000. So I'm at $11,000 profit. Then I made no money. He's paying eight seventy five dollars a month and I made nothing until the 61st payment. That's when you make your money. And the more they have into it, the more vested they are. And so now this is that okay. same house. Yes. And uh, I'm just going to fast forward it a little so you can see. This guy's a contractor. Actually, this particular guy now has like eight houses from me. But all the work that was done, which is why I love this, he did the work. He spent the money. He's putting in the labor. All I do is I operate like a bank. I just collect payments. I process payments. And that's it. There's not, I'm not a rehabber. I'm not a handyman. I just process payments. I just want you to see the kitchen and then I will move on. Now for me, this is a piece of paper. It's just an address, right? But for him, it's his home. 
He's doing the work. It's his investment. He's the one doing everything. And I really try and stress that with people to, to stop thinking like, um, like a landlord and think like a bank. And I always teach that to my people. When people call me and say, oh, this guy wants this or that, or he needs me to do this, I always re respond with the question, what would the bank do? I said, would, would a bank do that for him? Or because that I try and keep emotions out of it and we operate just like a bank. And that's it. And so I, I really like sharing those so you can take an idea of what we're actually buying. And you may be thinking, and I don't know where you guys are. I should have asked you earlier what part of the world you're in. I don't know if you're all in South Florida or if you're around. But most markets, you're thinking, there is no such thing. These houses don't exist. But I promise you, and I always tell people, I say, you don't have to take my word for it. You can spend five minutes on Google or on Zillow. And there are states with thousands of them. And they're not hard to find. They're readily available. Now, we may offer less. They may be listed at 45, and we're offering 25 or 20. And then we meet them somewhere in the middle. But they are readily available in several states. And before we move on, I'm just going to tell you some of the states that we buy in. Ohio, uh, Michigan, Illinois, Missouri, Indiana, Alabama, Mississippi. Those are the main states where we have, I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds throughout my group now that are buying in, in those same states. So before we move on with how we handle everything else, I want to address a question that you may have percolating in your head, which is, should we pay them off? And I'm calling them rentals, even though they're slow flips. I always go with that as a question that you would understand if you were to talk to somebody else about it saying, I'm thinking about doing this model and paying everything off, what would their answer be? And so first I want to say your lawyer, if you were to speak to your lawyer and just call your lawyer tomorrow and say, say, Hey lawyer, I got a, a new plan and I'm going to own all my houses free and clear. Typical lawyers. And I can't say all of them, but typical lawyers are going to be like, no, 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 no. You don't want to do that. And you say, why not? They say, you're going to be a magnet for lawsuits. And they're right, right? They're, they're going to be your magnet for lawsuits because a, a litigator can look and see you on all these houses free and clear, and they're going to want to sue you because they know there's something to get. Or if somebody wants to sue you, they'll take it on contingency because they know there's something to get. You guys are all already in arrears, and you know there's plenty of programs for asset protection. There are plenty of ways to do it, so you don't have to worry about um, you don't have to worry about the fact that they it won't be able to be done, right? There is plenty, plenty out there. So there's plenty of ways to protect this. There's, there's asset protection ways to do it. There's plenty, there's using land trust. There's putting your own liens on properties. There's ways to do it that your lawyer is not aware of. There's ways to protect your assets. But next thing you know, you're going to talk to your accountant and you're going to go in and say, Hey, Mr. Accountant, I'm thinking about owning all my properties free and clear. And your accountant's going to say, no, 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 no. You don't want to do that because why not? You're going to, you're going to lose your biggest tax deduction and your accountant's right you are going to lose your mortgage interest deduction. However, you get to keep the cash. I don't understand why people don't ever get that through in their head. You may pay $100 in interest and you get to deduct $100, which saves you around $30. Or you can keep the $100 and yes, you have to pay taxes, $30. But now you have 70. I, I, you know, I, I never understand why people are so focused on saving taxes where they're willing to spend money more than they're going to save. But nevertheless, I always say your accountant's job, they have one job and one job only, and that is to save you money in taxes. And you will be paying more in taxes when you own everything free and clear, but you'll be getting to keep more money. So that's part of it. And it's okay. And lastly, I want to mention your calculator. You consult your calculator and say, you know what? I want to punch in all the numbers Scott's way. And I want to punch in all the numbers um, the Burr way or doing, you know, refining or doing conventional rentals with, with 30 year mortgages. And your calculator is going to tell you Scott's wrong, 30 year mortgages, you're going to make more money. And your calculator is right. You will make more money doing the leverage model, doing the Burr method, doing all these other methods. You will make more money if everything stays perfect for the next 30 years. There is a button missing from your calculator, which is what I always like to refer to as the peace of mind button. And that is why I am a strong, strong believer in we want free and clear as much as everybody hates it and talks negatively about it. I'm like, if you can spend a week with me and see my life and see what we have going on, you would change your mind and you would be like, you know what? Free and clear is the way to go. Because I know people that have tons, tons more than I have. If they do not live the life I live. I know people that have three or four and 500 houses, but they're doing the whole leverage model and they do not live 
the way that I live because it's all predicated on debt. It's a machine that you have to keep feeding every single week. So I'm just going to touch on a few questions. And I know some questions I think got asked. Oh, there they are. Oh, okay. The thing wasn't moving. There is more questions. Okay. Um, a, few, uh, a few questions that were asked. So I'm going to go over them first in here. And I'm not going to cut. I might cover them. I might not cover everything. I see one real good one that just got asked about if they're 25 grand, how do you sell it for 90? That's a great question. I believe I'm going to answer it. But if not, make sure you ask, ask me again. Um, discovering deals. So where do we find these deals? The number one source of finding these deals, believe it or not, is other investors. Why is that the number one source? Because nobody wants these houses. And by nobody, I mean conventional landlords don't want these houses because they're the worst. If you're a conventional landlord, this would be the worst rental you can have in your life. It would be a low end property. It's going to be the, the you know, low rent 875. Nobody wants an 875 rental. You want to get one for 1875, right? So it's going to be a low monthly. It's going to have the highest maintenance. If you're dealing with tenants in that um, price range, they're going to be high headache tenants. Nobody wants them. And then you talk about rehabbers, the flippers. They don't want them because those are the areas where there's no ARV. There's no after repair values. So in which case they don't want to renovate in that area. Those areas don't have a lot of retail sales. And so what happens is we have these wholesalers that do their mass marketing, be it the internet, direct mail, or whatever source they're using. And then they'll end up just naturally getting some deals that fall into our model and they can't get rid of them. And you'll see them in the Facebook groups, the local groups in these towns that we buy in, and they're marketing it at 30 grand. Then a week later, they're like, okay, it's reduced to 25 grand, 22 grand, because the conventional people don't want them. It doesn't work for them. Our model, it's on fire, right? But they're, but for what the conventional people do, I call it real estate purgatory. I say, nobody wants them. Landlords don't want them. Flippers don't want them. Nobody wants them except us, which gives us leverage in the buy. Wholesaling groups on Facebook. That's another place we buy a lot from. There's wholesaling groups. I'm going to tell you something that uh, I don't think it's confidential. No, I'm not going to say it. Because one, so one of our guys in our group got a deal off Facebook. I'm not going to talk about the numbers because, again, this will be replayed. But he did an unbelievable deal, a deal that's bigger. I do some big deals and it's bigger than any deal that I've ever done. And he literally plucked it right off of a Facebook group on, you know, a Facebook uh, group for a, on a wholesalers group on Facebook and sold it, wholesaled it as a slow flip and made more money on that than any deal. And it wasn't even like he did marketing. wasn't like he did um, his own campaigns, went on appointments. It was just readily available because real estate purgatory. MLS. So you guys know the multiple listing service. I, I've actually bought off MLS years ago when the market got crushed. I started wholesaling right off MLS. That ended about 2011 because everybody came back into the business and everybody was buying again um, and had their own MLS access. But since then, I've been telling people, I call it MLS, I call it the misleading lead service because people be like, I found a deal. I'm like, no, it's just listed at that price. There's 300 offers already. You're not going to get it at that price, right? Um, however, in these other markets where there's this real estate purgatory where they don't want them, my people are buying them right off MLS, which is crazy to me. Now, mind you, they might not be listed at 25 grand. They might be listed at 45 or 50, but we make low offers. I got one guy in my group. He makes 10 offers a day, a day, and he probably only buys two a week. But still, they're readily out there. He's not like he's doing marketing, going on appointments, spending a bunch of money. It, they're just out there. They're available right on the MLS in these markets where we're buying. So there is a huge boom coming for slow flips. It's already been booming, but I realized that as this market is shifting, it is going to be an even bigger boom than what we're doing right now. Um, something else that can be done is to convert existing rentals. And I did this myself. So I lost, remember I told you the houses I lost to foreclosure? Well, I still had a bunch of them left. Well, when I decided I didn't want rentals anymore, we converted our existing ones to slow flips, which means they weren't slow flips on the buy side, being on a five-year mortgage, but we did the sales side. There's two sides to a slow flip. We did the sales side where instead of renting it, we sold it on a 30-year mortgage. And the other thing I didn't tell you, and maybe it's in a future slide, is what the price we sell them for is what we call, I call super retail. So it's the full retail, the highest price it can go for as if it was renovated, even though it's not, but without agent commissions, without closing cost assistance, without a pick row, without punch list, without anything. And we get, we get full retail because what we're, what we're selling is the financing. And I'm going to share that with you in a second. So how do we fill our slow flips? We use horrible, misspelled, 
disgusting looking white signs. We do a few different things. One of them is white signs, misspelled words. And let me tell you a funny story. And I got to talk fast because it's 8.15 and soon Alexa is going to be like, come on, you got to go. And I could, uh, I can keep you guys till, till 9, 10, 12 o'clock tonight, but she's going to make me get off. So um, the very first time these signs, let me tell you a funny story. I, I never write signs because my handwriting is deplorable, right? Like absolutely deplorable. So I would always have someone else do it. Well, I had this person turning in their keys. They said the house was vacant. So by myself, I drove out there, saw the house. The house was in, you know, a decent condition or whatever. And I put it on a lockbox, but I, I wasn't going to write the signs, but I figured, hey, I'm already here. It was about 30 minutes away from me. I'm already here. So let me write signs and I'll stick them out. Well, my phone rang off the hook. And it went crazy. I probably had 60, 70 calls that day. And I filled it the next day. I went out there and I picked up my signs and I put them back in my office. Probably a week, two weeks after that, I never thought twice about it. It didn't cross my mind. A week or two after that, a guy comes into my office and he goes, what's a Chep, Chep House, C-H-E-P? And I said, excuse me? And he says, yeah, it says Chep House. What's a Chep House? And I was like, oh, God, that was legitimately an accident. I was just writing real fast. Didn't realize I did it. I wrote C-H-E-P instead of Chep House. I wrote C-H-E-P instead of Cheap House. Anyway, that started me thinking. I was like, I wonder if that is why my phone rang so crazy. And so I started testing. I started testing nice signs and bad signs, professional signs, crappy signs. And the crappy signs outperform professional signs. Now, not for everything. So keep in mind, just for slow flips, the crappy signs outperform more than 10 to 1. And the reason is, and I've talked with these people, and I know the reasons now, keep in mind when I'm saying this, I don't want you to do this. If you have rentals, no, you wouldn't do this for rentals. If you are selling a house, you wouldn't do this for selling a house. This is strictly for slow flips. The reasoning is our customer who needs us, they need the owner financing, they need the no credit check, they need us, they don't call on the professional signs because they know exactly what you're going to say. I need a $45 application fee. They already know they're not going to be approved. They're not going to waste their $45 application fee. They already know they're not going to be approved. When they see these signs, all they're thinking is that's a guy I can work with. And the phone rings off the hook. And that is what we want because those are the people that we're marketing to. So we market with signs, we market with Facebook Marketplace, and we market with Craigslist. That is it. Three things that fill all of our houses. I'm going to give you a few different tips, though, because I don't want to leave you guys with half of half of what to do or not to do. So testing new markets. We use ghost ads. Now, we are pretty solid in all the markets that I mentioned to you already, but those aren't the only markets. There are other markets. Every now and then someone's like, oh, I want to try Oklahoma. So there's a few things we have to try in a new market. I'm not going to get deep into it, but we obviously want to make sure that they're landlord friendly, that they're going to allow an eviction and not a foreclosure. We want, you know, we, we, there's certain things we want to check. We want to make sure that the rents versus purchase price are going to work where it can pay off in five years. But we also want to make sure that there's demand. How do, we, how do we test for demand? We test it with a ghost ad. And what that means, I'm sure you guys have heard of ghost ads before. We just run an ad for a very similar house. It doesn't actually exist. That's why it's a ghost. And we run it in that market with the real numbers that we're going to sell for. And then we put it out sometimes only for a day. And we're just gauging how many leads we're getting. Are people interested? Because sometimes you'll put an ad out and nobody contacts and you're like, okay, there's no, I don't care how cheap the house is, there's not a market for us out there. But when you start getting blown up on your ghost ad, now you take it down right away, you respond to the people and let them know that that house isn't available, but I should have another one in a week and you'll call them first and you do call them first. Now you can feel comfortable closing on the one you were looking at. And then when you close on it, now you don't even run an ad, you just start off by calling all those people that called you on your last ad. And so this way you are enabled to test the market and you don't even have to wait it out running an ad on your next one. A couple of things I want to get into, and one of them is going to answer your question on the uh, 25 to 90 grand. So the first one is how do we qualify the buyer? Now, I, a few people in my group are doing a different model because that's the way they're comfortable with, but I'm going to tell you how I do it. I strictly go on first come, first serve. People think I'm insane that I don't do credit checks. I don't do any checks. But let me tell you the reason why. Well, there's two reasons why. But one is, remember I told you how I started? I started with non-qualifying assumptions, and they were the exact same thing. You didn't have to have a job. You didn't have to have credit. You didn't have to have any savings. You just had to have the down payment, and that was it. Well, that's how I started buying. And so I always felt like, well, who am I now to tell somebody else they can't start the same way, right? And so 
I do first come first serve. The second reason that I try and keep my people doing first come first serve, although not all of them do, is regulations. The laws are very tricky on discrimination and most people are wrong. And I ask people all the time on, I'll, I'll give them a question and I say, so what's your, what would you do in this situation? And they almost always answer wrong, which means you're at risk. And I'll tell you what's wrong. And, and most people get this wrong. And I say, if you have 10 applications came through, right? And you read all 10 of them and one is clearly way more qualified than the rest. Don't you want to take that one? You know, the answer is always, yeah. Well, you know, even let's just say you have two people, two people, there's A and B and A makes 60 grand a year and B makes 300 grand a year. Well, clearly I'd rather have B. But the way the law works is you have to set your minimum acceptable criteria. And then the first one to meet that minimum acceptable criteria is the one who gets it. You can't look at everybody and then choose the best, which makes sense. I should be allowed to pick out who's the best. But the way the law works, it says, no, you get to set what your minimum is. And then the first one to meet the minimum gets it. So I decided, I said, I am not messing around with any of that. I give it. To, nobody can ever claim discrimination on me because the first person to put the money in my hand is the one who gets it. And that's the way I qualify my buyers. Another tip I want to give you, and this is a big one, and this is not just for real estate. You should do this if you're ever selling anything, a car, a TV, anything. And that is eliminate the word asking. I die every time I see somebody do this. If you say I'm asking 89,000, you might as well say, make me an offer. We're not asking, we're selling. When someone's selling a car for 10 grand, it's 10 grand. When they say I'm asking 10 grand, well, right away, I know they're negotiable and we're not negotiable. And so eliminate that word. That word alone will make you tens of thousands of dollars more over the course of your career just by stop putting that in your ads or in whatever you're selling. You never use the word asking because we're not asking. And this next one is justifying value. And this is the question that uh, Mina just asked. If you are buying it for 25,000, how could you sell it for 90,000? And that is a great question. And I'm gonna tell you exactly how I justify it. So first of all, I'm gonna go through some scenarios with you and say I'm sitting at a table and the person says, oh, this is 89,000. I just saw a house on the block was for sale for 30,000. How come this one's 89? And my answer is always the exact same. I say 30,000, that's a good deal. I would buy that one if I was you. I say it just like that. And then they respond the same every time. Well, I can't, that one you got to pay cash for. And I say, well, then I would buy mine. And I say it just like that. I'm brutally honest with everybody. And I say, no, what we're selling is the financing and the house comes with it. If they had 30,000, then they should buy that one. But mine is with financing. And that's the why, that's why they buy mine. They buy it because of the financing. The other way I explain value to people is, and usually if there's a woman there, I'll use her handbag as an example. I will say, people say, well, how'd you come up with that price? And I will always answer it the exact same way. I say, I say the value of anything is what somebody's willing to pay for. It. And it's true across the board. In everything, anything is worth what someone's willing to pay, period. That's how value is created. Sometimes I'll use a bottle of water. You know, I'm running out of time, so I don't get too deep in stuff. But I'll say, you know, a bottle of water is 25 cents at Sam's Club. It's $2 at Subway. It's $5 at a ball game. It's 15, you know, it's $8 if you go to a, a pro game. It's the same bottle of water, right? It's different values, different places. And why do we pay it? Because we're thirsty. And, you know, that's it. I pay it all the time because I go to games a lot and I'm thirsty. Well, I'll use somebody's handbag. And this is the easiest way I do it. I say, I, they'll say, well, how come, you know, how did, how did you come up with this? How come it's 89000 I say, well, it's, it's worth whatever someone's willing to pay. And somebody is going to pay $89,000. It doesn't have to be you. And then I will look at the woman's pocketbook or handbag that she has. And I will say, you can buy a handbag at Walmart for $25, or you can buy one at Louis Vuitton for $7,000, probably more like 17,000, but I always say 7,000. And I say, is it worth $7,000? It's still just a handbag. But the reality is yes, because people continue to pay it. If everybody stopped paying it, they wouldn't be 7,000 anymore. They would come down. But as long as people continue to pay that price, that's how come Louis Vuitton bags can be sold for $7,000. And I say, this is no different. Somebody is going to buy this house probably today. They generally sell in a day or two. Somebody's going to buy it for 89,000. It doesn't have to be you. And that's, that's exactly how I answer it every single time. I'd never negotiate. I never argue. I never try and pretend it's a different value. The value that we're providing is the financing. This is here, right here. We sell the financing. The house comes with it. That's what they're buying from us. They're buying the fact that they, can, they don't have to get qualified with a bank. A lot of our buyers, you know, people think that we're dealing with um, low-end people and we're not. I mean, sometimes you do, but 
what we're typically dealing with are business owners that don't have tax returns. They don't have tax records and they, um, they can't qualify with a bank or they don't have all their stuff in order. So, but they still have a family they have plenty of money. They just can't do it. And so, but with us, you're qualified. You have the down payment, you're qualified. We also get a lot of um, contractors who want to get into rentals. And so what they do is they'll buy them from us. They have their crews renovate them and then they rent them out to their crew. Now they're probably getting $1,300 a month. They're paying me $875 a month. They're happy. I'm happy. Their people are living there. Everybody's happy in the transaction because of the financing. If they had the money, they could just pay cash for it, but they don't. So they need the financing and that's what we're really selling. So our whole business is predicated on, there's a gap in the marketplace. The sellers need cash and the buyers need financing. And so all we do is we step in the middle and we give them the cash and we give them the financing. And that's it. That's the whole business summed up. We just step in the middle and give them the financing. So a couple other tips, I always try and do reviews. When I have everybody do a picture with me, when we come in with a giant check, I put them all on the wall. My wall is like double in size since I took this picture. Whenever somebody buys a house, I put them on the wall. And the reason I do that, it just makes the next people that come in that much more comfortable because now they know that you're not a scam. They, you know, you're not the, they're not the first person to ever step foot in your office. And it's something that I, I stress so much with people that it's free. So why wouldn't you do it, right? Putting, you know, taking pictures, doing reviews is completely free. And yet it gets us so much business and so much value over something that's free. I'm not going to do a whole thing on private money, but I at least want to touch on it. For those of you who don't know what is private money, basically private lenders are not what people think. Most people think when they start with me and they're like, I'm going to look for private lenders, then they call private lending companies or hard money lenders. That is not my definition of a private lender. My definition of a private lender is not somebody who loans money already. They're not in the industry. They're not in the business. They're not in real estate. They're just a person that has money in their account that doesn't want to make one, two, three percent of their money and is happy to make 12 percent. If you approach a lender, they're not going to like our deal because 12 percent is great money for somebody that has money sitting in the account. It's not great money for a professional lender. If you approach a hard money lender, they're going to laugh at you because we're offering 12% and that's a lot of money for our people, but it's not a lot of money for a hard money lender. They're making 25, 30% on their money. So uh, to me, a private money lender is just a person that has money in their account. They're not in real estate. They're not in the lending business. And then there are private lender. They don't have five people they loan to. I'm it. I am your liaison to the lending world. And I have people that literally hug me and thank me and tell me that I've saved their retirement because I do all the loans, you know, they keep lending the money and I put it out through my group and, um, and they're making 12% return on their money and they're snowballing their money. And um, I have a, I'm going to see if I have enough time. I, I'm going to have to make it work. Hey, let me ask you a question, Alexa, are you going to kick me off sharp at 930 or can I, can I give them some extra stuff? You can give them a little extra. Okay. Um, I, I, you know, I'm sorry. I just rambled too much, but one of the things on raising private money, I just want to tell you that, um, People, the biggest reason people don't raise private money is strictly fear, fear of rejection, right? They know the person's going to say no anyway, so they don't bother asking. So the way we perfected to ask is by not asking. We don't, we never ask. We offer, we offer an opportunity. We don't ask for money. We offer an opportunity to make 12%, but better than that is we don't offer it to them. So we never, we never say, do you want an opportunity to make 12% on your money? We ask them, do you know anybody who might want to make 12% on their money secured by real estate? until they come back and say, well, I might be interested. Tell me about it. And then I'll still play it off. Not you. You're into all that other stuff. But, you know, somebody, you know, you might know somebody who's looking for something. And this way we can't maintain our, our level of, of control where we're the ones calling the shots and not sitting with our hands out. Please loan me money. I don't want to. Uh, I, don't, I'm, I know I'm going too long. So I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to speak fast. So so to cap it off, I want to tell you guys that you can do this one day or today can be day one. You decide. I have seen people completely change their lives. I had a guy on today that I was talking to. He's 79 years old now. He started me when he was 74. And I remember when he started, I was almost, I was almost like, oh my God, how are we going to do this? Because he was already 74. He's 79 now. He's, he, when, when, he, when I met him, there was no way he was ever retiring. He quit his job, I think, three years ago. He's got seven, 17. He told me today he's closing another one. 17 or $18,000 a month coming in now. Positive cash flow completely turned his life around. And I always think about this last thing here saying, you can do this one day or today can be day one. It's a slow process. So day one is important because that's what starts the clock ticking, right? 
So where do we go from here? And I just want to tell you a few different things. If you feel, and I try to give everything I have to give, right? I'm in a small amount of time I have, but if you feel confident enough to take what we've gone over today and run with it, then absolutely go ahead. You know how slow flips work now. Um, you know the, the basics and you know the nuts and bolts, but some words of caution. As with most things in life, that um, success comes when found in the details, right? We, uh, we always have to worry about the little details, the little nuances, and some of you guys may have questions on that, which I'll go over if I'm allotted the time. I'll stay and answer as long as you guys need. But be just because you know the game of baseball doesn't mean you're just going to step on the field at the World Series and win, right? You may know how the game works, but you still got to know everything else. Um, how to win, and this is going to be absolutely no different. So what I just shared with you today is the process for increasing your cash flow and setting yourself free. It's never been based on yachts and Lamborghinis. I know some people like that, and that's fine. It's just typically not the crowd that gets involved with the slow flips. So I've been doing um, real estate since 1994, and it took me years and years to perfect the art of the slow flip. Was it worth all the years? Uh, you know, I hands down, absolutely. I have nothing but great things to say about it. But um, learning, when we, when we evolved to slow flips, learning this is what evolved me from being a day-to-day, -day, deal to deal investor where every month, every deal was making money for the next one so I can make it to next month or the month after that. And it's just stabilized everything to where every month now we have X amount on the first of the month, every single month, moving forward. So there is no more have to do anything. My son is only 15 years old now and he has 30 houses already and they're all free and clear because he started a while back when, um, when I did that package, he did a package at the same time and his, he's 15 now and his are already all free and clear. But when he started, we did a full loan on him just like all the rest of them. Now, mind you, I did most of the management of it, but, um, but he, they, they're in his LLC. He owns them and he's got 30 of them now that are free and clear. So I've studied and learned through trial and error over decades, I spend tons of money on education, lawyers. I still spend money on lawyers because I'm always perfecting it. Um, and the bottom line is you just can't skip this process. So you know the deal. If you want to become a lawyer, you go to law school. You want to become a doctor, you go to medical school. I was going to say doctor school. Um, if you want to make money doing slow flips, you got to just learn how to pick the right market, evaluate deals, make offers, secure funding. We have a great system for securing funding. Um, and then get them filled and collect your payments. That's the way the whole business works. And then you just have to learn all the systems and processes. We've made it really, really easy. When I tell you easy, it's on another level easy. Um, and all you need to do, we have a team. We have a team that does the filling of the properties. We have a team that goes and puts on lock boxes and does pictures and videos, does all the heavy lifting for you. So it really makes it easy to do something remotely in other markets. And then when you have questions, every single week, every single week we go over all of them. But the learning curve can take a long time and I don't know where your confidence level is right now or if slow flips are for you. Generally, people know when they hear me speak, some people are like, I hate the idea, I never wanna see it again. And some people right away, it's in their heart and they like, I know what the rest of my life looks like. And, uh, and, and I love that because it's not for everybody, it's for the people that it's for. So I don't know where your confidence level is right now, but would it, help your confidence if we were able to take you by the hand, step by step, system by system, and walk you through the entire process. I believe it would. Would you have the confidence then? Would you have the confidence if you had your hand held and were coached through the entire slow flip process? Would that increase your confidence level to 90 to 100%, 70% at least? Come on, you gotta be, you gotta be better than, the, uh, than our, our 40, 50 percenters. So what if we can shorten your learning curve from 10 years down to just a few weeks, right? So today I'm giving you guys an opportunity and when you stay on till the very end, and I know I'm out of time already, but when you stay on, I am going to tell you something that you are gonna be like, well, that just can't be real. It can't be possibly be that good and you're gonna see that it is, so I'm gonna show you. So here's exactly how I'm gonna do it. We're gonna start doing slow flips from scratch together, start to finish, absolutely. So that by the time we're done, and this is gonna be a different process for everybody, but by the time we're done, you're gonna have a system in place that manages your freedom, which is what we're in business for, effortlessly. So is this for you? So I always try and say, who is it for? If you are a beginner or an experienced person, if you are looking to set yourself free, some people that is not what they're after. You know, my, I'll tell you, I have a guy in my group who's only 31 years old. He's been with me five years already. He has more houses than I do now. 
And it's interesting. And I, I have several that are going to pass me in the amount of houses. And when it first happened, I remember thinking, well, I must be slacking because now my students are beating me. And then I spoke with a mentor of mine and he said, no, he said, that's the whole purpose. What you spent 30 years doing, they got to do in weeks. They got to get to that spot. So they're not starting from 30 years ago. They're starting from now. And so it really doesn't matter so long as you are on the same path. And that's the path to freedom. That's the path I like to bring people down. If you're interested in learning a new strategy for passive income and long-term wealth, this is not wholesaling. I love wholesaling. I'll never talk bad about it. But um, this is not wholesaling where we do a deal and we get a check. This is setting yourself up for check monthly, 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 check after check. And if you're looking for consistent cash flow without the landlord headaches, now not a bunch of people raise their hands saying that they were landlords, so you don't resonate with it yet. But if you were a landlord, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There is a lot of headaches that come with landlording. Um, maybe you've tried conventional rentals and it's just not working the way it was promised in the, uh, in the event you might've went to or book you read. Um, maybe you just want to build your passive income. So you're not spending so much money on maintenance and repairs and work. You know, even if, even if the money's there, it's still a lot of work to coordinate the work that has to be done. And you just want a surefire way to set yourself free. So I have what we call the freedom accelerator program, and it takes you step-by-step step so that the, by the time you're done with it, you have a slow flip business created for you and with you. It's not just buying a house. It is a complete business. In other words, I'm going to take you step by step through the whole investing business and get you to exactly where the people in my group are weekly killing it. I mean, when I say killing it, I wish we had time. Well, I'm going to ask you in a second if you have time for that, Alexa, I'm going to actually log in. Um, so Here's exactly how it works. I don't believe in courses alone. I've bought hundreds of courses. I was always a course guy. I'm a constant learner. Um, however, I've learned a few things. And one of them is that, in my opinion, courses typically don't work. You can't just, you can't just buy a course. You can, and some people will work. I think if, I, if 100 people had a course, maybe one or two people is actually going to do something with it. And so when we were designing this, I didn't want it to be that way. I wanted it to work. And so what we did is we include three different things with it, which is, the course, which is all of the learning, the community, which is probably evolved to be the best part of the entire thing, and coaching. Every single week, I do it personally with you guys every single week for years. I've been doing it since 2015, every single week. So together, we're going to start at the very beginning, and we're going to take you through the entire process. So can you say yes to these things? So would you like to have your P.O. box filled? Now, most people don't even use P.O. boxes anymore. Now, mostly everything comes in digitally. I am actually, I've been doing it for so long that I have so many people that still pay by check, but I am slowly trying to convert everybody to our online system because it's just so much easier because it automatically puts it in your ledger. Um, so still the PO box build every month is awesome, but we're going to be changing everything. So it's just all automated. Would you like to live the debt-free lifestyle? Now, a lot of people don't grasp how awesome debt-free is because we're trained. We're trained. You know what? I'm going to, I know I'm, I know I'm off topic again, but Debt is the number one heav most heavily marketed product in the world is debt. Can Think about that for a second. They spend more money marketing to get you in debt than any other product in existence. That's all you need to know. They're willing to spend that much money just to lock you down. That is the modern day slavery is to get you in debt, get you in chains. I think about it every time I'm on a plane. You guys know you're sitting on the plane and they sure are selling you hard on get a credit card. You're going to get free tickets here and free upgrade here. And, and they're just doing whatever they can to enslave you and get you swiping that card and get you in debt. Would you like your time to be your own, right? Do you just want to be free? Do you just want your time to be your own? Then the Freedom Accelerator program is going to be for you. You've heard me talk about our student successes. You, turn, you heard me talk about our strategy, how it works really well. By now, Excuse me, I've been yapping and my throat's getting raw here. I'm sure it's abundantly clear that uh, joining the Freedom Accelerator program is going to be one of the best decisions that you've ever made. But I am going to finish this off with something that, uh, that you will say, wait, that just can't be. And this is, how can that even possibly be this? So by the time you've completed this program, you will have a fully functioning, slow flipping business without all the stress and without all the headaches. You should be getting plenty of buying opportunities. I was counting just today while I was waiting to get on. We have a, in, in our program, we have a thing where people can actually sell properties and buy properties. And just this year alone in the group, so that, that takes away buying from Facebook, buying from Zillow, buying from agents. There's over 300 houses were transacted in the group so far this year. 
and we're in October. Um, plenty of buying opportunities as well as private funding, and I didn't even talk about that. We have a national private lender who funds our slow flip deals. They specifically do slow flips with our terms, so you can close deals fast. Or just bring me or other people in the group. We have people in the group who say, I'm not ready yet, but they're still finding deals. So then they just post them in the group, mark them up a couple grand, and then it's basically wholesaling, but within the group because they found the deal. They sell it to somebody in the group who doesn't want to go through the work of finding the deal. And um, so even if you're not ready for it, someone else will buy it for you. So how much does the program cost? The retail value, what it sells for even today, what it sells for every single day of the week, other than right now, we sell it for $4,497. That is it, period. There is no other site where it's any less. This is something different than I'm doing, but stay to the end and you're going to see that, oh my God, this is different. Um, if that sounds expensive, it's because it is, right? It, it is expensive. I'm, I'm very careful with my money. I don't go throwing money around. So I agree with you. It is expensive. But I always tell people to keep in mind, if you keep doing what you've always done, you're going to keep having what you've always had. And if it either fits with you or it doesn't, you know, some people right away, they know they're slow flippers, right? And then some people right away, they're like, no, it's not for me. So that's a choice for you. But remember, working a 50-hour a week job um, isn't changing anything. It's not getting you anywhere toward freedom. And it's, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys know, I have two books out. The first one is called Work Just Gets in the Way of Making Money. And that's what that saying. As we all know, work just gets in the way of making money. We end up working so much that you never actually have time to make money. My other book is called The Art of the Slow Flip, just to let you know. Um, so if you did just one slow flip, I always try and break down the numbers real small, but I'm going to get even smaller than this. If you did just one slow flip per month in five years, one slow flip per month, this isn't setting the world on fire. In five years, you would be at $30,000 a month, positive passive cash flow. That's just doing one slow flip per month. So is four, four, nine, seven worth it at that point? I would say, yes, of course it is. What if you just did one slow flip per month? year, right? If you just did one slow flip per year, you're going to come out to one slow flip per year is going to be five. You're going to be at $3,500 per month, per month. If you just did one per year and you took it easy. So one of my biggest thrills in life, I'm sorry, I went, the fact that you're still here, I'm, I was skipping it. One of my biggest thrills is getting messages and I have tons of them um, from people in the group. Like I told you, this guy I just spoke with today, talking about how much this has changed their life and how much it's impacted them. And it is not one or two or five people. It is the entire program. The people we are coming in contact with are setting the world on fire. Um, this one I just got, and I have a thousand of them, but just signed contract number 20 and have three more under contract and said, yep, this stuff works. Thanks for bringing me into the game. It is amazing. If you're willing to invest in yourself, then I'm investing in you, but I have two parts to this. And so I really want you to stay to the end to hear what I'm going to do. So for those of you guys who are interested right now, I'm going to take a thousand dollars out of my pocket and I'm going to invest it in your future success with slow flips and the freedom accelerator program. So during this meeting and for the next few hours, Alexa is going to say exactly how many hours she's going to leave it up there for you. I'm giving you a thousand dollar discount and reducing the price from four, four, nine, seven to just three, four, nine, seven. But that is not it. There is a lot more, and you're going to hear in just a second. So to put it in perspective, um, you just show me to demonstrate how you can make tens of thousands of dollars per month while enjoying your freedom. So if you were actually able to do that, would you invest $3,497 to acquire the same ability to do so? I already know the answer, and I know absolutely you would. But with that being said, there's one small catch. The $1,000 that we're doing off right now is just for the next few hours or as long as Alexa says she wants to do it. She might want to do it till tomorrow because I know she's reposting this. Um, so it's, it's typically for the next few hours. Why do I do a deadline? You guys know why I do a deadline. I do it because decisiveness is important. It is a trait carried by all successful investors. You cannot build a business while sitting on a fence, right? And so I want to help you to get off the fence and kind of force you to make a decision but I'm gonna make it even easier for you so it's a non-decision, right? I'm gonna make your decision a non-decision. I'm making you decide to make a change for your future. And so now in addition to this $1,000 discount that I'm giving you right now, I am going to make this completely safe, risk-free, without any possibility of you having to worry about anything. So you literally have no reason not to give it a go. First of all, 
two different things I'm going to give you. One is I'm going to give you an unbelievable guarantee that is no questions asked. If you follow along for the first 30 days of the program, and if for any reason or no reason at all, like you just say, you know what, I just decided it's not for me, it doesn't matter, give us a call and let us know, and we will give you a full refund of the entire amount on the spot, no problem. So for, that's your first part. That's not all of it, but that's the first part. If you decide for any reason or no reason at all, you can literally just be like, you know what, I looked at it and I don't like it. I already know you're not going to do that. But if you were to say, oh, I looked at it, the reason I know is because I give 10x what I actually tell you I'm giving you. I give you 10 times that amount. So we never get that. But I always like to tell, to make you more comfortable. You don't have to have any reason at all. You can look around the entire um, program. And then if you decided you didn't want it, we'll give you a refund right on the spot. So you have no issue with that. But that's not the best part. So this is where it's gonna really get interesting. I am doing something that I've been doing that I really stand behind and I love it, um, that is going to prove to you that we are not here to sell you courses. Are you ready? Yes, I wanna do more slow flips. I love doing slow flips. I continue on, but it is not my ultimate goal. My ultimate goal is my mission to help as many people as possible to set themselves free through real estate investing. And while I'm going to be taking you by the hand and I am going to be doing this entire program with you in order for you to reach your goals, you must take action. And so that's again, me pushing you to do something at this point. I know that you're start, you're ready to get started and you're serious about learning the skills and you're ready to take action or you wouldn't still be here. So I am going to put my money where my mouth is. And this is where it gets really interesting where I offer a completion challenge. And this is unbelievable. Nobody does this. So if you follow the program and do the steps, do the systems, just like we're going to do, we're going to do it together step by step. Just all you have to do is follow the program. Once your slow flip business is complete and set up and you've made at least 20 offers. Now, keep in mind, not one has to be accepted, but you've made at least 20 offers at any time over the next six months. You just let me know. You let my team know. Show us that you've done it. Show us what you've done. And we will send you a check for your entire tuition back. Not a portion of it, your entire. Not only do you get the entire tuition back, but you stay in the program. One of the things I don't think I mentioned is I don't have an end date. I don't do a six-month program or a year program. My people that I have since 2015 are still with me. I The reason I do that is because this is a long-term business. And I'm like, well, I can't say it's a year and you have five years till you're free and clear, right? So our people are with us forever. And so, yes, you get your entire money back when you complete the completion challenge. And yes, you're still in the program. So in other words, I'm going to pay you. I'm going to pay you to finish the program and change your life. So why am I doing this? It's because, you know, we already spoke about it. I want to reward the people who take action. It helps me to meet my vision and to meet my goals on helping set as many people free as possible through real estate investing. And I know that once you do it, you're going to be a raving fan as everybody who's already done it has become. And it just helps more and more people to reach that goal and me and my mission. So from my point of view, it's an investment in my most valuable asset, which is my students helping me to complete my mission. There is literally no way you can lose. At bare minimum, you have 30 days complete to get your money back and go through the entire program completely risk-free and go or stay in the program, go through the program, make your 20 offers, even if none of them get accepted, simply following the steps and you get 100% of your money back. So um, what do you need to do to complete the challenge? People always ask that. So I put it in because everybody's like, oh, there's going to be a catch. There's going to be something tricky, something I can't get done. This is this simple. So I'm going to, first of all, go through all the modules. That's simple. You just watch videos. Set up your systems. You don't have to use the ones we recommend. If you have your own CRMs, you can use any of them. You can even use Podio if that's what you want to use. Um, yes, it includes all the contracts. includes everything. We give... Like I said, it's 10x more than I'm even telling you. Structure your entity. If you already have an entity, you can pass right by it. You'll get to that portion and you'll click done. You're just going to um, structure your entity and get it set up so you have your buying entity. Report weekly progress. Every Friday, everybody checks in and says what they've accomplished for the week. Have a phone call with our direct mail coach. Now, again, this is just a phone call. You don't actually have to order anything. You don't have to buy any direct mail. If you don't want to do any marketing, you just have that call. And then you show us that you made the 20 offers. And then there's a let, oh yeah, it is on here. The last step is when you're completely done, you just do a video testimonial, that's your last step. And that's when we send out the refund check. 
It is, I, we did not make this complicated at all. I made it extremely simple. So you either get, you either complete the course and get your money back. You don't even have to get a deal. You don't have to have any of your offers accepted or you go through the course in the next few days. And if you don't like it, which I know you will love it, but if you don't like it, you just let us know and we'll completely refund you um, with zero questions asked, no problem whatsoever. So we have the six roadblocks we always talk about, selecting the right areas. Um, I'm sorry for talking fast. I know I'm way over time already. Um, we have a comprehensive guide where all of our members are buying. So it's much easier to buy in an existing market where we already have infrastructure. We already have guys to put on the lockbox. We already have a lawyer if we need to go to court. We already have somebody to do pictures and video. So we try and stay in those same markets. Setting up the tech. If you decide to use My Deal Factory, we have somebody there who will set everything up for you. They give you actually websites included with it. Slow flips for your properties available, slow flip, uh, slow flip buying site, and a raising private money site. They give you all those for free included in My Deal Factory. Private money, we're going to teach. We are really good at raising private money. So we teach in detail how to raise it. But on top of that, we have people in the group who sometimes also loan to other people. And we have a national lender. Um, we have a national lender who is doing funding across the country. Um, they do have a credit score requirement. So that's the only one. Private lenders, we have no requirements. That national lender does have a credit score requirement. I believe it's 700. So it's a high credit score, but they do fund slow flips with our system. Um, we set you up with the software and the payment management systems so it can be seamless. And this is really good. So when someone pays, it's automatically, it's in your ledger. It all happens automatically through the online system. We use a free system for that. There are paid versions. Um, we use Inago, which is completely free. So you don't have to pay anything. And the tenants pay when they pay. It's like two or three bucks, depending on how they pay. They pay a fee. Setting up your LLCs. And I want to make sure to clarify this. We have a legal team that will set up your LLC for free. But I want to make sure to let you know it is not free. It's just no profit in it. They are costs involved. There's the state filing fees. There's the, the right, whatever they call it, the transaction fee. But there's just no profit in it. It's their cost. And I remember I had somebody say, wait, you said it was free. And so I tried to clarify it. There are still costs, but it's minimal because there's no profit in it. Um, and then roadblock six is not having the right mentor. And so I want to make sure to stress once again, I personally, I do it myself once a week, every Wednesday. I do the calls myself, which typically takes about two hours. I stay on, I go over everybody's deals, I answer everybody's questions. I also record all of them. So every call going back years and years and years is on there. I have people that have listened to all of them. They say, I listen while I drive or when I mow the lawn, they're always listening. We have a private community that is unparalleled to anything. I have people that are like, I've been in 10 groups, never been in anything like this before. It is a fantastic group. And we support you with any technical issues that you may have. Um, these are just some people that have gotten their, their um, completion challenge checks back. I put them in because as I was thinking it earlier, I said, well, you know what? People are going to say, wait, how do we know that they actually send them back? And I, uh, I do. We send them back every single month. We do it once a month. Everybody who's completed their completion challenge, we mail out their checks every single month, once a month. And so just to recap the program, you're going to look over my shoulder, learn everything. You're getting a thousand dollar discount right now um, for anybody who signs up today. The six month completion challenge so there's no rush. You have six complete months to do those little things. You can probably get those done in a week if you actually wanted to. But we give people time because I don't want anybody to feel pressed or pressure for it. Um, some bonuses I didn't tell you about. Well, I told you about the direct mail coach in my deal factory, week, weekly coaching calls, the community. But I didn't tell you about we do a live event every year. It's coming up now in January, the Freedom Accelerator Summit. The tickets are $2,000 each. We're giving everybody who signs up a free ticket for it. It is a three-day event, and it is unparalleled how awesome the event is. Um, and it's a completely free for anybody who signs up now. We're just throwing that in completely free to come to the event. And so that is a huge bonus as well. So I know the link is already in the chat. And then I also um, put up the QR code. But before I go, if I'm not too far over time, you tell me if I am, Alexa. I wanted to answer anybody's questions, if they had questions that they wanted to ask. Yes. Do this thing. All right. I have to scroll because you guys did not use the box that I asked, but it's okay. I still love you. Um, how much, I don't, and again, I'm not sure if we answered these. So if I can rapid fire, you could tell me how much is the down payment percentage? The down payment when we're selling? Maybe 
Um, and we don't have anything down when we buy. So when we're selling, we typically do three to five thousand dollars down. Now sometimes I do higher dollar houses if they were sub twos, and I've gotten as high as sixty thousand dollars down. But on our regular conventional slow flips, based on the numbers we went over today, they're generally three to five thousand dollars down. What percent on the loan income I have to pay Uncle Sam and what deductions can I use if I'm receiving that money free and clear? So that's a great question. And it depends on how your CPA writes it up. Um, so you still get to deduct your interest. Everybody's like, wait, I'm going to lose my interest deduction. I said, no, it's still a business interest deduction. You still deduct your interest. Your buyer can deduct their interest. You, they deduct what they pay. You deduct what you pay. So you will still get to deduct it. And then, yes, you are going to be taxed. One of the things that makes the tax seem like more is because the price is so low on these houses, there's not a lot of depreciation. Just picture a $30,000 house. They're probably going to say 10000 of it is land, if not fifteen, which is giving you $15,000 left. That's going to be broken up over 27 and a half years. So it's not a lot of depreciation. However, we get to keep a lot of cash. So I know a lot of people get hung up on that where they're like, yeah, but I'm going to have to pay taxes. I said, yeah, well, you don't win the lottery if you don't want to pay taxes because you got to pay then too, you know, but you get to keep a lot of cash. So you, you definitely get to keep more than you're paying out, which is why we do it. Perfect. Um, have you foreclosed on any of your loans for non-payment? So yes and no. So I, 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 we didn't go over this today, but we don't actually foreclose. One of our criteria, so if, if, if you're asking, have we had def defaults or had to turn over? Absolutely. Obviously, it would be a perfect world if everybody paid and stayed perfectly. Um, but we only invest in states where they treat us as a regular eviction. We won't invest in states where they make you foreclose. So some states, they're like, nope, we treat a land contract. Well, I'll give you some states we do, like Illinois and Ohio. They will make you foreclose, but only after they have 20% of their purchase price paid down, which is going to take them about 12 years. And so the way I look at it is, hey, if they make it 12 years, then I'll have to go through foreclosure if they default at that point. But to, to give you the short version of that, which I, I'm not very good at short versions, um, we only invest in states that treat us as a landlord if we have to foreclose or turn it over, then it's a regular eviction. Awesome. Thank you, Scott. How long till you are making deals? Well, so that's a loaded question, and I'll tell you why. So we have one guy who bought 50 houses in his first 45 days, and he should not have. I stress to people to, if, if you, if when you say making deals, if you mean buying your slow flips, I stress to people to go slow. I tell them, you know, I always tell them we're running our own race because what happens is the group is very active and they're killing it. And so sometimes a new person comes in and sees this guy just closed number 27, 28, and 29, and they're like, I'm falling behind. I got to buy more. But I'm always the opposite. I'm like, no, 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 no. Just slow down. You're running your own race. I tell, you know, again, people don't like to hear this, but I tell people to look at 100 houses first. I say, and, and, and they're like, well, why? If I already know, I said, I want you to look at 100 houses so you know what a good deal looks like. Because otherwise, all you're looking at is the condition looks good and the price looks good, but you have no comparison. It's 30,000, yes, but should it be 18,000? And you don't know because you're buying the first one that you got excited about. So I try... I'll, I'll tell you, for instance, so I have one girl that she started with me um, in April, not this April that passed, April before, April of 23. She didn't buy her first house till August. And I remember because we just had her one year from her first house, but she has 36 now. So that's how long it took her for her first one. April to August, she was learning, but she didn't buy her first one because just we just did August and we had a, the whole thing where she hit her one year from when she bought her first one. But once she was comfortable, then she's on fire. But I like people to be comfortable. I, I try to slow people down. I had one girl, I'm going to tell you, and I, I know I'm rambling again, but she, let, before we hit New Year's last year, we were going over, you know, everybody's goals and how she ended. And she was making it like she failed. And she was with me for less than a year. And she says, well, my goal was 10 and I only got seven. And, and I remember, and I, I remember saying this to her. I'm like, do you hear what you're saying? You only have seven houses. I said, you've done this in like seven months. You only have seven houses. I said, if anyone outside of this room heard this, they would think you're insane. You have seven houses, but you're looking at it as though you failed because other people have more, right? And it's just the way it goes. Perspective, my gosh. So I want to make sure we didn't uh, miss this one. If they are available for 20 to 25,000, how are they sold um, for 80 to 90,000? Yeah, we, we did hit on that one, but I'll touch it again. And that's basically, we sell the financing, the house comes with it. If the person had the cash, then they should and would buy the other one that's available for 25 or 30. But they don't, that's not our customer. Our customer needs the financing. They don't have the cash. We in turn pay the cash, even if it's not our own cash, we use the cash and then we give the financing. 
Perfect. And then Deb, with the last question, I believe the deal factory is one of the free bonuses, if I'm not mistaken. No. So Deal Factory does have a monthly cost. However, it actually turns out to be less than free because it eliminates every other software that we use. So I believe Deal Factory is now the setup. We have people that set it all up for slow flips. That part they do for free. But the monthly cost, I believe, is $197. But it eliminates your websites. It eliminates, oh, it records all your phone calls. So it eliminates, I used to have call rail. It eliminates all of that. It gets gives you 10 different phone numbers. It does your automated follow-up system. It does your whole CRM. It eliminates so many other things that I was like, well, I used to be paying almost $500 for the same softwares. Now it's 197. So I feel like I'm getting paid to have it. Yes, I totally agree. And I know what you're talking about because I use it every day. So you guys, we all use it differently, but you guys listen to Scott. He knows what he's talking about a hundred percent. So you guys, thank you so much. And thank you, Scott. You, you're amazing. Really do appreciate the time and answering the questions and getting into it. We did record tonight's session, you guys. So please, for anyone who's watching the replay, please, please, please. It's HTTP. Oh no, scan the QR code on the screen. Save your save yourself. Scan the QR code on the screen for everyone in here. Go press the link in the chat. I will send each and every one of you a thank you email as soon as we hop off of here. I did send the message to the winner for the raffle, a private message. I will email you tomorrow. So congratulations. But you guys, you guys really thank you so much for your questions. I really, really appreciate it. It really shows how much you appreciate Scott and what he's doing here. And I'm excited for you guys to work with him. So go take advantage, $1,000 off, money back guarantee. You're going to get everything you need and more. And a lot more. <laughs> I only went 30 minutes over, so I feel good about that. I, uh... oh, I'm, I'm not mad. And clearly everyone in here is not mad either. So we, we truly appreciate it, Scott. Any last words before we go to sleep? Well, yeah, I'll give you last words. It's the same way I end my meetings every single week, which is do something today that your future self is going to thank you for. I love that. You guys, please, I'll put the link in the chat one more time. Um, super easy. I'll also send you guys an email. Look out for my email. It's coming from me, Alexa at bpmreia.com. So go click the link in the chat, click, 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 or scan the QR code that you see on the screen. If you have your phone, just go doo -doo -doo, scan that thing or take a picture of it. You can take a picture as well. You should be able to click it. Um, so yeah, guys, thank you so much. We'll see you guys bright and early. We have another webinar in the morning. All right. Have a great night. Thank you. See you Bye -bye. next time, Scott. Thank you so much. You're Bye, guys. Bye.